I'd like to talk with you today about a topic that I see quite commonly when I'm talking with people who are dealing with that narcissist in their life, and it's a difficult topic. You see, one of the things that happens when you're in a relationship with that narcissist is you have certain expectations, and those expectations have not only not been met, but in many cases shattered in an awful kind of way. For example, it could be that that narcissist was a parent, a mother, or father who wound up treating you in very awful ways. It could be that you were married to someone that you thought was going to give you a really good relationship and a wonderful life together, and then it turned out to be your worst nightmare. It might be that it's a, it's a job situation where you had some real neat career aspirations and it blew up because of that narcissist or in your social circles. Uh, the, the possibilities are very broad. But what happens when you get to the point of realizing this person is not right, there's something very wrong here, you wind up having a real bitter possibility that can come along and it gives you that feeling of contempt. And contempt is a very, very difficult emotion to get through. It implies that there's a form of disdain, resentment, revulsion, scorn, those kinds of things, even hatred. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, many of you are familiar with Dr. John Gottman. He's a he's kind of the gold standard for research on marital therapy and and uh, the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy relationship. And even though you may not have had this situation in a marital situation, his results still speak to a broad array of, of relationships. He talks about how there are four horsemen, is what he calls them, four characteristics that uh, spell doom for any kind of relationship: criticism, contempt defensiveness and stonewalling and of the four that are a predictor of personal and relational ruin the number one uh, characteristic that stands out is contempt now i'm going to foreshadow to you where i'm going with all of this by giving you a quote it's, it's not an exact quote but by Dar dr martin luther king he says darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can when you wind up with this spirit of contempt on the inside of you, it, it, it turns you into a person that you don't like, and chances are the narcissist treated you in a very contemptuous kind of way. There's another uh, saying, uh, don't exchange evil for evil, but when you go into that place of contempt, that's exactly what you're doing. Now, before we go a little further, I do want to make you aware of some resources that we have. Below the video, you're going to see some links that I have to some of my books. One is entitled The Anger Trap, and that's quite pertinent to what we're talking about here. Another is When Pleasing You is Killing Me. And then there's a third link that we have. It's by it's from a, a partner of mine, Laura Carenza. It's her book, Ugly Love, and she's speaking as somebody who's actually lived through some experiences with narcissists. So I hope you'll avail yourself to those resources. And then also, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we'd love for you to do so so we can keep you alerted when new videos pop up. I want to tell you a story. This is a number of years ago. I was speaking with a woman who had that narcissist in her life and that person that was a member of her extended family. And for years upon years, this person had just wrecked havoc with all sorts of people inside that family, including her or especially her. This individual had been a very inappropriate person in many ways. And as she would refer to this individual, she would, re she would call that person Hitler. And she, the reason she did it is because she wanted to think of the meanest, ugliest, nastiest name that she could come up with, and that suited it. I asked her a question one day, because she had never spoken to me of that, about that individual's name. I said, what is that person's name? I, 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 I want to know. Well, she told me. And I very gently said, would it be possible for us to just simply call that person by their name? And she had this look on her face like, and, and she knew exactly where I was going. And she began crying. And uh, I asked her to tell me a little bit of what that was about. She said, I, I, I don't want to dignify that individual by calling them by their name. Hitler's the best thing I can say. And I spoke to her and I said, do you understand that, I, I understand your feelings, but do you understand that as you continue in that vein, it keeps you stuck? It keeps you locked in to that painful feeling and there's so much about you that's right and good. I'd like for you to be able to move beyond that. And she knew exactly what I'm talking about. 
when you allow contempt and hatred in the aftermath of a relationship with that narcissist to take up residence on the inside, it becomes a type of emotional acid, uh, doesn't it? Uh, it just eats away at your sense of resolve. You wind up having a sense of bitterness or um, cynicism, and, uh, and, and it, uh, it can cause you to just have uh, a park at a place of very negative emotion. Uh, also, another thing that happens when you get caught up in contempt, it can uh, allow you to begin to generalize. For example, when somebody's had a very bad love relationship, they, they had high expectations as to how it might go, but then it turned awful. Then they can generalize and say, I will never get involved in another relationship again. Uh-uh, it's not happening. Well, what if there's a side of you that really knows how to love? And there might be someone out there that could do that. I'm not saying that's what you must have in order to have a happy life, but you don't want to, uh, to eliminate that as a possibility. But the contemptuous person gets so caught up in the negative side of life, they don't really want to entertain the positive. Um, actually, contempt reinforces a negative self-image that you might have. Now, keep in mind, the narcissist uh, loves to speak poorly about you. They have nothing but crummy things to say about you after a while, very critical and harsh and all of that. But when you go to your place of contempt, it's like you're giving your own self a, a no vote or no confidence vote. I don't think I can get beyond this or I can't deal with this or I can't handle it. Uh, th this is just too much for me. And I'm thinking, where did you learn to think that way? You can get beyond this, but that contempt keeps you caught up in a lot of negative self-thought. So I want to see if, there, uh, if I can point you towards five different thoughts that can perhaps guide you as you try to get beyond this whole experience of contempt and bitterness and resentment toward that narcissist. Now, the first thing I want to say is let's first acknowledge the narcissist was wrong. When that person treats you in a harsh and mean-spirited way with all the name-calling they can have, with all of the, uh, the condescension and the, uh, the judgment that they have toward you, it was wrong. And so we're going to also say the emotion that's associated with that kind of interaction is legitimate. <clears throat> so when we talk about you getting beyond your contempt, we're not saying quit having the emotion. I understand. You feel hurt, you feel disgusted, you feel uh, that sense of betrayal. And so rather than saying, quit feeling that way, well, you feel that way. And so the first thing we wanna acknowledge is there was something very wrong there, and at the same time, uh, it, it led to a lot of hurt and painful emotion. Uh, let's allow yourself to have that humanity. Now, the second thing I want you to zero in on is Ask yourself, where do these painful emotions want to take me? I don't know if you've ever learned to think that way. Uh, actually, there was a very interesting book years ago by a leprosy specialist, Dr. Paul Brand. He's since passed away. But the title of the book was Pain, the Gift Nobody Wants. Now, he was relating this in the physical sense. Uh, people with leprosy or Hansen's disease is what they call it. They... Um, they wind up losing their sense of pain in their extremities, and because of that, all sorts of unintended consequences happen, and uh, they actually conclude that they would love to have some of that pain back. It's kind of strange because the pain actually alerts them to some, some things that they need to, uh, to, uh, to take care of, and so it actually becomes a part of their alert system. When you feel hurt, when you feel angry, what's the pain trying to tell you? Now, typically, the pain is, is associated with your sense of self-preservation. Your pain is your body or your emotional senses, uh, your emotional status is way of saying, we can do better than this. Uh, I deserve something that's better. Uh, I want to have more respect and dignity and honor. And so when you listen to what your emotions are saying, then the question is, can you move toward that? And so uh, you want to let the emotion work in your behalf as opposed to letting it just tie you down and become a burden to you. A third thought I want you to consider is um, consider the possibility of forgiveness. Now, when I use that word forgiveness, particularly as it relates to a narcissist and particularly when there's quite a bit of abuse and harshness, many people will th shake their head and think, I don't want to forgive. That person doesn't deserve it. They, they deserve all sorts of terrible things happening. 
And again, I get it that you would think that way, but let's keep in mind, forgiveness is not about what that other person deserves. When we talk about considering forgiveness, it means we're trying to do what's right for you. This, this is for your sake. Uh, and when we say forgiveness, what we mean is you release that person from uh, the hope that they would give you restitution. In most cases, narcissists won't give you restitution. They won't uh, pay you back or they can't pay you back for some of the wrongs that have happened. And so uh, in forgiveness, you basically say, I release you. Uh, I don't expect you to give me anything that's going to make this situation any better. Uh, this is my truth, but I need to move beyond it, and you don't need to be a part of my psyche. That's what we're talking about, and it's helpful for you. Now, a fourth thought is I want you to begin considering what kind of emotions and qualities and characteristics do you want to have most predominant in you. In other words, uh, can you think through the best version of you that you can? And I'm hoping you would come up with some qualities like goodness, honor, respect, fair-mindedness, firmness, um, uh, gentleness, balance, peace. Those would be some characteristics that you can uh, uh, commit to on the inside of yourself, and then you can actually zero in on those uh, and, and figure out what uh, circumstances and times you would need most to live out those characteristics. Be thinking of what the healthy you would look like and, and, and how it would actually play out in, in real terms. And then finally, Let's understand that, uh, uh, number five, you can learn to reclaim your sense of identity. The narcissist, in all of their harshness toward you, wanted to establish your identity, and they wanted to say, here's my agenda, and you stay according to my agenda. That's who you're supposed to be. As you let go of contempt, it's your way of saying, no, I establish my identity. I want to know that I'm a right kind of person and I'm somebody that has uh, uh, the, the things that are good. I don't need to let my identity be determined by my experiences that I've had with the narcissist. They've had way too much say anyway. <clears throat> so I want to close by offering you three summary words. The first word we're going to uh, use is allow. Allow yourself to have your humanity. Uh, yes, you do have the emotion, and we're not going to deny that, so allow that to be there. The second word is plan. Plan on where you want to go from this day forward. You can't erase the past, and you can't erase or eliminate that narcissist and that person's presence in your life, but you can plan uh, as you move forward to uh, be a much better version of you. And then the third word I want you to zero in on is anticipate. Anticipate what that much better version of you would look like. See into that, and as you do, you'll realize that that narcissist, while they played a role in your life, um, that narcissist also doesn't have to be an ongoing influence in who you're going to be. Uh, you, can, uh, you can claim who you want to be. You can have the freedom to choose who you are. I think that would be a much better way, and that's your way of responding to contempt in such a way that it doesn't weigh you down. It becomes a springboard for good growth.